Uh, Galatians chapter 5, fairly familiar verses of Scripture. We'll begin reading in verse 13. Galatians 5 and verse 13, the Bible says, For brethren, you've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law was fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the such like of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time, in, in time past, that they which do such things are not, uh, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the, uh, with the affections and the lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for not another opportunity to be with thy people once more this side of eternity. We give you great praise and glory for that. Lord, we uh, thank you uh, for your dear Son, loving Jesus Christ, that offered himself for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, this morning we pray that you would bless the, your word to the hearts of the hearers, Lord, that you'd make them an understand and know what your word teaches, and we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all, for it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, some very familiar verses of Scripture for most people, or at least 18 through 23 is, but I, I think that the real message of the text starts back a little further, and that is beginning in verse 13. And so he says, for brethren, uh, he's ad addressing the redeemed. If you say you're saved, you're included in this. And, uh, you know, very frequently it says for brethren, but that's all inclusive to the redeemed, uh, sisters included. So ladies, this includes you in this address that Paul gives to the church at Galatia. Now, the way that I understand <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2 and 3, they had really gotten off the mark and we're almost believing a works for salvation type of doctrine. And here he almost gives them the opposite message. And if you read those two chapters, he emphasizes grace, grace, grace once again. And then he goes back to the topic of works. Now, listen this morning. If, if you're redeemed and you have no works in your heart, you might as well hang it up on the post. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, anybody can act like a Christian. You may be doing and have all the outward appearances and, and ladies, your hair may be long and you wear your skirts appropriate length and all the good things that go with that, but if you have nothing in your heart, it's empty. You're doing it for the merits of the flesh. You're doing it to be displayed and the Lord is not pleased with that. And worse still, you're facing eternity. You know, I think today in the modern age, and the dear brother mentioned it a lot, we're so focused on doctrine, we forget the end, of, the end results. Donna's Aunt Carol, uh, Sister Diane's sister, went out in eternity this week. That's something to consider, is it not? Uh, uh, 
brother Titus, right on, right on the verge of meeting his Lord and Savior. Um, that, that's humbling, is it not? That's something that we should stop and take note of. So as Paul is writing to the churches of Galatia, there was a group there, and all of them shared the letter. Uh, he says, For brethren, the redeemed, the saved, ye have been not called, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not the liberty for an occasion to the flesh. For, uh, but by love serve one another. Now I want you to see that many people today, and I, I, I'm not, you know, one of the large things that I've seen in, in the Reformed Baptists, they're not very holy people. They're not very separate people. Now the ones I know, at least, uh, uh, almost use the grace of the Lord as occasion for the flesh. Uh, now there's some that are not like that, but I'm just saying, the, I know of one church like that in Louisville, Kentucky, and they really do. They, they turn the grace of our Lord into licentiousness, uh, a freedom card, something to do what they please. That's not what grace is about in any, in any stretch or form of the matter. And so we see as Paul is writing to this church, the way to manifest a true uh, a true experience of grace is to serve one another. You know, really, in Church of Christ people, you call their pastors ministers. And that's not a bad name, but it doesn't necessarily a preaching ministry. A, a ministry can be offering a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus. That's a ministry. And if it's done with the right attitude with the right uh, sense of the Spirit, it's a wonderful ministry. So you can think about yourself and not just the preacher boys. What are you doing for ministry? What are you doing to show the love of Christ to people you know? The redeemed and the, and, and, and the ones that are not saved. What are you doing as a ministry? And, and, you know, we get so caught up with this life. And, and you know, I, I sincerely believe this. The Bible says as the end of time nears, the days would be shortened. And, and I believe they have. I don't know about you, but I can't cram everything I need to do into a day anymore. I, I get home. I've been trying to put a set of tires on, on my little tractor for three weeks, and they're still setting. we're done to put them. And it's not because I'm lazy. I literally don't have time to do it. And so, where are you going to cram that ministry in? Where, where are you going to cram in the study of the Word of God? And not just study. Again, ministry is to other people. You know, just a kind word. You know, uh, what I found among sovereign grace pe people that often... They're almost snobby, and a kind of word is rare. And, and so as he's preaching here, as he's teaching these people, this is how you display the love of Christ. Verse 14, for the law is fulfilled in word, one word even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ posted the same teaching. He taught the exact same thing in his own ministry. Now, uh, me and Donna, we have a very difficult time with that. But you know what? It should make us try harder than anybody else in Stewart County. We need to love our neighbors. Now, uh, Brother Kenny lives on the street by himself. Dead end street, he's the only one down there. Uh, well, you gotta find somebody to love. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I really believe that we should try to take neighbors that are difficult, that are difficult to deal with, and love them. You know, Brother uh, Kraft said when they were on the field in Mexico that the Mexicans did not like American people down there. And they rarely had a good neighbor. And it was very difficult to love them, but they tried. You know, and, and so we see that if we really want to display 
uh, the love of Christ, we have to show that kindness, that meekness, that goodness to people that more or less would slap us in the face. And you know, when when I was young and I, I began to read of the Lord Jesus Christ and about the slap in the face, I always thought it was quite physical. But you know, people can slap you in the face with words. Mm -hmm. And what does the Lord Jesus Christ say? He said, turn the other cheek. That means don't give up. That means speak to them again. That means be kind to them. And that is the most difficult thing to do. But it does display the love of Christ. And so as we go along in this world, uh, you can evaluate for yourself. This, this requires a lot of self-review. You'll have to be honest with yourself because you may look good and wonderful to me. But deep down, you know you're doing it for the wrong reason, or perhaps you even display yourself as snooty. That that ought to be spoken of the, uh, of the people of God. Yeah. Verse fifteen, he gives us a warning. But if ye, speaking to the church at Galatia, or the church us of Galatia, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye not be consumed are totally obliterated or are going away completely of one another. And, and, and you say, well, Brother Larry, I wouldn't bite nobody. Just like with the slap on the face, uh, what do we do most with our mouth? Speak. We say more words than even eating. You ever run anybody down the road? Biden is not my favorite president. But you know what? <laughs> and I won't get off on President Biden that much. I actually feel sorry for him. Uh, he, not only does he embarrass us, but he embarrasses himself. Why would somebody put themselves in that position? Um, we need to pray for him. We need to pray for him. And, and, and so we see that the danger in not loving and not displaying the love of Christ is we're going to take each other out. And you know what? I've seen, you know, we live in a day and age where we see churches just fading away. Churches without pastor literally for 10 years. You know what the biggest risk there is them biting and devouring one another? You know how church doors close? It's not simply people quit coming. It's the people that they are dividing and devouring one another. We need to be very, yeah. very, very careful. And I've had to teach myself the difficult way. The Bible is very clear. You be careful what you say about a man of God. Because it, it, it will come home to you. And so we find as Paul is teaching the churches of Galatia, he said, I'm just saying this because if you don't, you're going to go down. Then he gives us something about the nature of man. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, uh, capital S Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, uh, you know what? Uh, and you know the genuine, how genuine you are, much more than I do. But when you do things that you speak of the name of Christ, if you're doing it, for the right reasons, your flesh will tell you not to, not to. Now, if you're doing it for pride, your flesh will eat it up like uh, a chocolate oatmeal cookie. But if you're doing it just to show, if you're doing it for the right reason, uh, <laughs> your flesh will come up against it. Not the devil. Let me read that verse again. Your flesh will come up against it. So we find another thing here. You have to harness that flesh. That's right. And we always begin to think, oh, you know, we'll be separate and we'll get rid of our TV and on and on and on we can go. That is not harnessing the flesh. Harnessing your flesh is this big mouth. It's also revenge. It is also I'll get him back. It is also, I don't want nothing else to do with him. 
A lot of things can come from that, don't you think? A lot. And, and so we find uh, if the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the active agent of God now in the dispensation of the church, and I certainly believe that He is, then we have to look at this and understand that's the agent of God. That's the one that's with us right now, that's doing for us, that, that is leading and guiding and directing us. Verse 18 but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now that's an unusual statement, but let's flip it around. If you're not under the Spirit, what would we have to conclude from that? If you're not being guided by the Spirit, if you're not being led by the Spirit, you must be under the law. With the repercussions that come with that. You know, the Bible says any food that is received for uh, that is received with thanksgiving is good to eat. And I've often wondered if we don't bless that food, are we back under the Jewish dietary law? Something to consider, isn't it? And, and so we see then uh, we as the Lord's people, we need to be extremely, extremely mindful of what this is about. Then it gives us a warning in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest or obvious or evident, which are these adultery. Now, you know what? Every one of us say, oh, I never run around on my wife. I never run around on my husband. I, I'm doing a good job. But what about looking on a woman? Bible, the Lord Jesus said in his ministry, if you look on a woman to do so, you already did it in your heart. Right? Uh, sometimes we need blinders on, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, you know what your blinders are? That. That Word of God. That, that's your blinders. That's your guiders. That's your, you know, blinders on a horse is so that he'll keep in the same direction. And that's the same way with us. That Word of God is blinders keeps us going in the right direction. And so he, he, most of these sins, none of us would say, oh yeah, I've done that, oh yeah, I've done that. But think of your spiritual condition, your heart condition, and maybe you have. Uh, and they'll mess you up spiritually. They won't cause you to be lost again, but your, your enjoyment of your time with the Lord God is hindered by these. Adultery, fornication, sexual relationship outside the marriage bond, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Now, witchcraft, I'm going to take a minute to see because we, you know, we just got done with Halloween and all the filth that goes with that. But listen, the witches are not these people with the pointed black hat and riding on the broom. You know what witchcraft really is? Making someone believe something that's not true. Uh, manipulating the events so they take it to mean this when it really means this. You know, uh, such a, you know, mama used to tell me about a woman back home, uh, Miss Mag Parker. The mama was scared to death of her. She goes, I never went to Miss Mag's house, but she had friends that did. And Miss Mag would place her hands on a table and the table would start walking across the room, all this crazy stuff, the rocking chair would rock by itself. You know what that was? That was an illusion. Now, I don't know how Mag did it, but I certainly don't believe that was witchcraft. Um, so, uh, she manipulated the scene. She made it, now, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying there are not true witches out there. Don't get me wrong. That's a different sermon for a different day. But um, have you ever manipulated the circumstances? Have you ever done something to anybody to make them believe something that wasn't true? I have. I think, I think if you'll be honest, you have too. That's witchcraft. You know, uh, preacher boys, you be very, very careful of what you preach and why you preach it. Because you don't want to manipulate things around just so that those, you know, really, if you think about it, that's where Armenian teachings come from, is manipulating a bunch of people so they follow what you say. 
And, and so we find uh, that he gives us this warning, and it's not just incantations and spells. It, it, it's your role in what you do. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. There's one. You ever hate anybody? I had to get over it, but I've hated my dad for a long, long time. Uh, I forgave him. We actually were pretty decent friends near the end. But hatred will eat you up. Hatred doesn't speak of the redeemed. Hatred will take you down. Hatred. Variance. Variance is the opposite of or, or being in an argument constantly. You ever, uh, have you ever met a person that would argue that, you know, this table is made of oak? No, it's not. That ain't no, there ain't no oak in that. That's a variance. I mean, constantly coming up with something to argue about. You know, that, that's not well-pleasing of the Lord's people. It doesn't speak of the kindness that a, a redeemed person should have. And so we often, uh, we often see that among the Lord's people, but often I wonder if they are the Lord's people. And then he says, of the which, and just for your uh, just for your future use, there are 17 works of the flesh here, 17 things that display the flesh, that display uh, our, our enemy, and there are only nine fruits of the spirit. You know what that tells me? That tells me that there's more to fight for huh, than really that you got got with it to fight. So we uh, we need to put. We need to go before the Lord. We uh, constantly, constantly need His help. Uh, we're never above that. And so we find a list of things that really speak of the loss that apparently could be found in the redeemed. Verse, uh, let's go to the end, end part of verse 21. As I've, told, as I've also told you in time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if they're not going to be in the kingdom, the best that I understand of that, they're not of the redeemed to start with. So, you know what? If you have these things continuing, boiling up in your life, and the Spirit doesn't uh, help you fight them, I'd make my calling and election sure. Because you may not have what you think you do. And, and so we find a number of things that we can evaluate ourselves with. And, and sometimes we're fearful of that because we don't like the results. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, capital S Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is love. You got someone that's difficult to love in your life? I've had several down through the years. The only thing I can recommend to you is love them you. If they are someone, you know, I had a real difficult time loving some people at work. You know what I should do? I should strive harder. I should pray for them. I should pray for myself. Whomever it may be, you are to love them. Well, they did this and they did that. I don't care. Try to love them. People, people, you know, what speaks of the redeemed is love. What did the writer write to the Hebrew church, snobby Jewish people that thought they were the only ones going? An entire dissertation on charity. Charity is love in action. That's not just saying, you know, uh, Jackson, I love you. That's when I know Jackson's family maybe don't have enough to eat, taking them something to eat. That's when I hear that Jackson has an illness and I pray for him sincerely and I go to him. Uh, that's love in action. Anything less is not genuine love. And it is difficult to love a people, to love a person that's directly one against you. Uh, we have a neighbor that's very difficult to love. He had something that happened to his house, uh, or outside his house on the grounds, and I think Donna was glad about it at first. And I said, no, we need to love him. Uh, you know, I'm glad his youngins wasn't in there when it happened. So we see 
the one that's most difficult to love is the one you need to be loving. And, and you can put anybody you want to in that socket, and it's the exact same thing. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. That means happiness. That means uh, uh, filled with joy. That means not going around like a sour persimmon. That means you uh, enjoy the things of God. Peace. Despite what's going on all around us, we have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. Long-suffering. That means to hang in there when there's two or three to be assembled together, that you still come and that you still are dedicated unto the things of the Lord. That is long-suffering. You ever had to be long suffering, suffering with an individual? Gentleness, goodness, faith. Now, I want you to point you out that it doesn't say, say the faith. The faith is the oracles handed down to, from God to men by his prophets. But this says faith. Yet, do you ever get weary on your faith? Do you ever wonder... Maybe, maybe the Campbellites have it right. That's your faith wavering. Maybe I should go get me a buggy and live like the Amish. That's your faith wavering. It's better still. The cupboard's empty. There's no, no money to feed it. You're hungry. Now, Lord, why did you do this to me? That's your faith wavering. And so, uh, a fruit of the Spirit is a, a faith is a strong Christian. It's a Christian that's been in the, been in the, uh, been through the battle, has been in the battle a long time, and that's where we all should be. Against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections with the affections and lust. Now, I ask you, have you done that? Have you crucified your flesh? I personally think this is a daily process. I believe in the morning when I get up again, I'll, I'll have to crucify the flesh anew. I'll have to be in a situation where I, I, I desire the will of God more than I desire my own. And I want you to see what is what has to be crucified. Affections and lust. What, what are affections? Oh. <laughs> It's when you have an, an interest in something, an, an affinity toward it, a, a, affections, things you love. Uh, items, nice vehicles, nice houses, uh, pretty women. Those have to be destroyed every day. Because you know what? The way the flesh is, you'll get them on your toe today, and you'll wake up tomorrow, and they'll be stronger than ever. That, that, that's the nature of this flesh. And then the last thing he says, lust. Uh, you ever wonder why Cain slew Abel? It escalated very quickly, didn't it? He was jealous of his brother. He was mad because God had honor unto Abel's sacrifice and had no honor unto his own sacrifice. I personally believe he violated the exper uh, the uh, uh the standard that was set up by the Lord God in killing animals and creating skin, a blood atonement has always been the atonement. And he says, no, I'm going to work through it. Mm -hmm. And he was so angry. And it escalated very quickly. And Abel's murder was the result. Going from lust to anger to murder like that. You know what? Don't get down on pain. You're made of the same stuff. We don't know how quickly we would escalate in the same way. And if we don't keep this flesh in tow, certainly that is what will occur. And then he says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Do you live in the Spirit? Have you been saved? Have you been born again? That's living in the Spirit. Now, walking in the Spirit is our display to others every day. You have to answer for yourself, do you walk in the Spirit? Now, again, that's not just saying, oh, this is what I do and this is what I do. How do you love your neighbor? You know what? Uh, I doubt that there's one of us that hadn't been beat up by somebody. And I'm not going to say who it is, but Donna had a little run-in a number of years ago 
with this midwife, and she was a nurse midwife, and a few years later, uh, I guess about six months ago, she was asking for Donna's help. See, the uh, best thing Donna could have done is say, you know, okay, that's the situation, and pray for the woman. The most difficult thing you will ever do is pray for people that have done you wrong. But certainly that's what we should do. And that's what uh, I believe the text concerning the churches of Galatia was about here. Don't use grace for occasion to sin. You are be led by the Spirit and follow what He says for us to do. Uh, Gospel of Luke chapter 4 very quickly. Uh, Look how Brother Lolly made me run over. Uh, Luke chapter 4, uh, verse 1 and 2. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Now, what did that say concerning all those works of both the flesh and the Spirit? It said that we are to be desirous to lead, be led of the Spirit. And here we find in the Gospel of Luke, and Jesus being uh, full of the Holy Ghost. You know what? I don't, I don't think that's constant what many people teach. I understand the Spirit indwells you at the redemption, and you have some leadership, but I don't think you can. You know what? There's been times I've been running on empty. What about you? You know what? I don't think I was full of the Holy Ghost when I had hair down to here and was out in the world. I don't think I was full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, would he protect me? Would salvation remain? Yes. But you know what? When I got led by the Holy Ghost is when I got into a church that preached to God. Do you think you'll be led by the Holy Ghost down in the Methodist church? I, I don't think so. They preach a false doctrine, do they not? Is the Spirit going to show up there? I, don't, I personally don't think so. And, and, and so we see then... The Lord Jesus being perfect, being God himself, being without sin, very obedient to the Holy Ghost, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He had scriptural baptism. He had baptism uh, according to how it was to be done, and immediately the Holy Ghost led him in an entirely different direction to be just just tempted, just tried, just through a rough spot with the devil. Does that sound like something that you want to enjoy? You know, and I'll, I'll get this for an extra. How did he fight Satan every time? With that. Every time that he was attacked, he answered him with scripture, did he not? How long do you know the scripture of God? You gonna be able to answer him? Or are you gonna say, wait a minute, <laughs> this is what my God said. This is what the Bible says. And that's how he did. And he made he he he, he made great threats and, and, and great uh, uh, temptations saying, if you are the Son of God, and every time the Lord Jesus answered him with scripture, every time he he, he was led by the Spirit in the direct path of the devil. So don't, don't expect all health and wealth. Don't, don't expect it's going to be a free ride. Don't expect that it's going to be a smooth ride because the Lord Jesus Christ led by the Holy Ghost right into the path of the devil. Last place, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, beginning in verse 26. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26, the Bible says, And he, meaning Philip, rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now, I want you to see that this Ethiopian really had no, no claim to come and worship. In other words, he was a heathen. 
He was a Gentile. He had, but he was so interested in the God of the Bible that he wanted to come and worship. And you know what? He got down there and he didn't even understand who God was. You know, prior to redemption, every one of us are in the exact same boat. We don't even understand whom God is. We don't understand His nature. We don't understand His goodness. We don't understand His love as uh, Brother Lolly taught us this morning. And that was this man's situation. Philip was obedient to the Holy Ghost. And he rose and went. How many times are you obedient in that way when the Spirit says, you need to do this? And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority of, the, of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had a charge over all her treasure and had come to worship to Jerusalem, uh, who had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning, meaning he was going back to Ethiopia, and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, or Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, join thyself to this chariot. Has the Holy Ghost ever give you direct instructions? Now here before us, we have a huge amount of, of study of the person of God and how we're supposed to live what the church is about and what it's not about. But I, and I'm not talking about that. Have you, the Holy Ghost ever said to you, you go to apartment six and you tell of the goodness of God? Do you believe he's still able to do that? I believe he does. I believe he does every day. I don't think that we're uh, always obedient to it, but he, was, he does. What do you think that would have been Philip's argument of going and joining himself to this people. I'd say there were two mostly. Number one, this was a very wealthy man. And he was not a Jew. Are Jews supposed to mingle with Gentiles? Are, are they supposed to talk with them concerning the attributes of God? Never. Now, we are, in the, we are in the change of dispensation, and I believe Philip understood grace. But still, you know, like all those Jerusalem, uh, church, all the church of Jerusalem, he was still very Jewish. But instead of argumentative, instead of saying, no, I ain't going to do it, he follows the instruction of the Holy Spirit, and he goes and he joins himself to that people. And Philip ran. You ever ran, literally moved quickly to follow the instruction of God? It says that Philip ran to this place. He understood and knew so much that this was the will of God that he ran to the people down there. And Philip ran thither to him, and he heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest? Now, I want you to see how the Lord God was working on both ends because if you know your Bible, he was reading Isaiah 53, the very description of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and dying for our sin. You think that was by accident? You think that was a chance occurrence? Certainly not. It was authored by God on both ends. His reading of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, his pitiful pouring out of his self on the cross, and here comes Philip. So do, you, do you know what that means? Do you understand that? And he said, how can I accept some man to help me? No. Well, can you? Are, you? are you in a position to help? If you're redeemed, you are. He said, oh, Brother Larry, I don't know the Bible. Well, first of all, study it. Mm -hmm. And then you will know it. And secondly, uh, he said he would give us what we were to speak in that hour. I'm not saying don't study, but if you study, he, he understood the teachings of Isaiah 53. He could say, that's Christ. That's what happened. That is who died for our sins. And, and, and if, you, if you don't know your Bible, you, you won't be as useful to the, uh, to the things of God. And so he te he he pointed to Christ with this spirit. And he says in verse 32, in the place of the scripture which he read, uh, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, 
And like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For the life is taken, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh this prophet this, or, uh, this, who speaketh the prophet of himself or some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Now, two more things and we're going to close. If you know your Bible, he preaches Christ. And he says, Lo, here is water. What doeth hinder me to be baptized? And he said, Nothing, if thou believest. Mm -hmm. And then what was the belief that the eunuch displayed? I believe the water is going to wash my sin away. No, no. He said, I believe, I believe Christ is the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And he said, he stopped the chariot and baptized him. You know what? That's a revealing truth. Here in the Bible Belt, people say they believe that, but they've not been convinced. Of the, I'd say many of them have not been convinced in the, of the Holy Ghost. That comes by a revealing. And you know what? That's back to this. Only you can answer for yourself. What about you? Are you saved? Are, are you certain? Do you know it? That's where you need to be this morning. Listen, this world's in a mess and it's going to get worse. Make your calling and election sure. Be sure, be sure, and then be double sure. Uh, never, never hurts to review where you're at.